Bob Cower, and I'd like to welcome you to Sherrod Harvest Community Garden. And I'm Jane McCrawford, Bob's wife, and this is our dog Bridget. You'll see a lot of us this year. This video is about how Shared Harvest operates in beautiful southwest Colorado. The garden is located at 7,000 feet above sea level on a working farm with pastures, horses, and a few Scottish Highland beef cattle. We have 36 acres and a half mile of the Florida River. Feel free to explore the farm, but watch out for electric fences and close every gate you open. Don't get too close to horses or cattle. They can move in unexpected ways and put you in danger. I started the community garden in 2001. I wanted to share this beautiful place and surround myself with compatible people. 36 families joined to raise organic food and to build a stronger community. Today, 67 households are in the garden. We raise an acre of vegetables every year. We grow produce for fresh eating from early spring greens to summer peas and pole beans to broccoli, chard, and winter squash long after frost. You can even preserve the bounty for winter. We also donate food to local sh shelters organized by Marge Barge. If we have a bumper crop, we may even sell produce as a garden fundraiser. Most community gardens rent out small plots of about 50 square feet, one plot per household. But our garden is different. We cultivate about 300 square feet per household, and we work in teams. In fact, we're organized a lot like a summer softball league. Each team has six to nine people. The number of people on a team depends on the crop type as well as the number of rows assigned. Your team will have two or three rows and you will raise a small variety of crops, but you get to harvest a large variety of crops raised by other teams everywhere in the garden. Each team has a skilled team leader dedicated to a good harvest. And just like a softball coach, he or she needs your good effort all season long. Successful teams do much of their own research, so don't hold back, dig in, and become an expert on your own crops. With a large garden space, you get more food. But surprisingly, the work requirement is about the same as raising a much smaller garden on your own. The team approach is very efficient as you focus on only a few crops each year, and your team gets a lot done in a short amount of time. You are required to work at least two hours each week from April 15th to November 15th, and even more hours during spring planting and in late fall when we put the garden to bed. If you miss a week or two for a vacation, no problem. Make up your hours before you leave or after you return. Also, Avoid absences during your crop's peak planting period. Every garden member works one compost party a year. Compost keeps our soil healthy and productive, so we don't need chemical fertilizers. Look for Kiyoki and Makala Moore managing the compost pile. We use three important communication tools. First, we communicate with experts. Leaders consult with our master gardener, Faye Schrader, about cultivation methods and pest control. In turn, Faye consults with our county extension agent, Darren Parmenter, and publish resources. Second, every week or so, we send out a long email message going row by row through the garden. Watch those messages for important announcements. Email is the main mode of communication within Teams. A few teams exchange notes in the garden office, too. Finally, mark your calendar for the third Sunday of the month for our monthly work party and potluck. We usually have a big crowd, lots of fun, and get much accomplished. The food is incredible. Potlucks are a great way to get acquainted and share ideas. Bring a dish to share, a beverage, and a dinner plate. We supply the rest. 
By the way, beer and wine are allowed. Keep a close eye on children and pets. We love children in the garden, so be sure to bring your kids. But protect them from farm hazards. These include cars, electric fences, the pond, livestock, motorized equipment, and even barn cats. Barn cats aren't as friendly as house cats and can deliver a bad scratch or bite. Kids want to climb on the hay, but the stacks are very unstable and could topple and cause injury. Besides, restacking the hay is bad work. And if a bale breaks, it won't keep and must be replaced. Sorry, kids. No climbing on the hay. Show, ch show children how to move about the garden using the paths and bridges and to respect the plants. We don't walk on the beds even if they aren't planted to prevent soil compaction. Kids can pick as many strawberries as they want, but for all the other crops, children should only harvest at their parents' side. Before your children begin to play, inspect the barn and play areas for off-limits or dangerous items and explain the boundaries. Also, be sure to pick up before you leave. Remember, you are always responsible for your children's safety and behavior. Dogs are welcome to the farm, as long as they play well with others. If not, leave Fido home. Dogs are not allowed inside the garden. With training, they soon learn to stay behind when you go through the garden gate. You are always welcome to bring guests to the garden. Friends and family can help you work in the garden and attend potluck dinners. They are not allowed to harvest for themselves. Harvest rights are limited to our dues-paying working members. Because the farm is also our private home, please let us know if you send someone to the garden unescorted. We would much rather greet your friend warmly than question someone we don't know. The garden works well because we all agree on two principles. First, work your fair share, at least two hours each week. No one wants to work double time for absent teammates. Second, harvest your fair share. When a team leader decides a crop is ready, we make a harvest announcement in the weekly email. It will say how much harvest is available for your household, and it may describe the best harvest method to prolong the crop. If you are among the first to harvest, you might believe all that produce is going to waste. Don't worry, we won't let that happen. We want to be sure every member has a chance to pick a fair share before we announce unlimited picking. Bob and I raise some fruits and vegetables outside of the garden for our own use. If it is growing outside the garden fence, please don't pick it. On a similar note, don't pick garden produce to give away or sell to others. If you're tempted to give away produce, remember, another garden member who paid for it and worked for it will want it first. If you're unsure about another person's picking habits, try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Most times is a very good explanation. After the season ends, members complete an online survey and we hold a leaders meeting to discuss their crops. In January, we use this information to select new seeds, draw a garden map, and put together new teams. Your dues are payable March 1st. If we don't receive your dues, we may open your spot to someone from the waiting list. Be sure to meet Bob at the first work party to tour the garden and tool areas and ask questions. See, See you, you in, in the, the garden! garden.